Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth video of topic 13 in Indian Technologies. Uh, this is under A2 Unit 3 Topic 13.4. Uh, this is for uh, storing data and securing data. Here is the Excel syllabus related to the section under Chapter 13. We are to learn about how data is stored in the cloud the threats involved in saving data in the cloud. Then we are to learn how data can be secured using the file encryption and password protection. Finally, we need to understand the features and functions of a, a database management system in controlling access. Right, let's start learning on storing and securing data uh, in the cloud. So let's start with looking at how we go to an era where data is stored in the cloud. It didn't happen over time and there were numerous technology advances before we got there. In 1967, the first floppy disk was invented, uh, designed to store text and image documents. Uh, the storage capacity of a floppy is just 1.4 MB. Imagine uh, the storage device having just like 1.4 MB. Since computers at that era had very small hard disk space, people carried boxes of floppy disk with them with important data files. Computers, laptops, uh, and even game consoles, uh, those days consist of a floppy disk drive. But today, uh, we don't see a floppy disk drive in our laptops or computers. As time went on, people had more data that needed to be stored, and CD-ROMs helped serve this need. Towards early 1980s, compact disk was invented to store data, uh, that is CDs. The early compact disk or the CDs as we know it were write once disk, uh, meaning once you wrote data to the uh, CD, uh, it can never be erased or rewritten with new data. The acronym ROM, uh, uh, read only memory, means that the data can be read but not written or erased. So these gave much greater storage capacity compared to the floppy disk, uh, somewhere around 680 MB of storage space. Uh, but since they were not rewritable, we had to throw them away once the data is no longer needed. So previous into this, uh, the rewritable CDs came out and this was a big game change in movable storage capacity. CD-ROM drivers were available in computers and laptops, game consoles, and uh, servers to read and write to and from CDs. So in 1994, the major portable storage invention came about with the invention of the USB drive. From then to today, uh, the capacity of the USB drives as well as the physical space taken for storing has like really improved. Today we can store several TB terabytes of data in a very small USB drive, smaller than your small finger. The data transfer speeds of these drivers uh, improved as we uh, improved the speed of data transfers in the USB standards. So today use, uh, we use uh, USB uh, 3.1, which is much, much faster than the USB 1.0 that came out in 1994. So while USB 1.0 could only achieve max speeds of 1.5 Mbps, the USB 3.1 we have today has top data transfer speed of 10 Gbps. Uh, the groundbreaking discovery came in around 2006 with the creation of cloud computing. The entire concept of storage was repurposed by removing the need for active management by the user. The user can remotely access data that is present on clouds that belongs to either the same organization or multiple organizations, the need for finding a storage space that is virtual and accessible from anywhere led to the development of cloud uh, storage. The amounts of data and information we use or exchange have grown exponentially and have called for advances in data storage. For over 50 years, scientists have experimented with various methods to find the perfect storage solution. So with so much data to be stored today, uh, we know that there'll be, it will be increasing in the years to come. So what's a cloud storage? Well, uh, a cloud storage is a data deposit model where digital information such as documents, photos, videos, and other forms of 
media are stored on virtual low cloud servers hosted by third parties. So it allows you to transfer data on an offsite storage system and access them whenever needed. Uh, the cloud storage is offered by a cloud provider as one of their many cloud services and the cloud provider maintains, manages and backup the data you store in the cloud storage and make the data available for you over the network, uh, typically the internet. The cloud storage service is structured on a virtualized storage infrastructure. A virtualized storage infrastructure separates the physical hardware from the data files. So we learned about virtualization in a previous lesson in detail. So if you recall the benefits of virtualization, it provides the ability to move the software from one physical setup to another or remove and change underlying hardware without distrib uh, disturb, uh, disturbing to the data or uh, the users. Uh, cloud storage services provides near instant elasticity and scalability. So in other words, you can increase or decrease your storage space at a click of a button. Compare that with using your on-premise uh, physical data storage that require you to buy hardware and then wait for weeks for the hardware to arrive to connect and expand your total storage capacity. So elasticity specifically means that we can dynamically increase or decrease storage capacity as per the storage demands uh, that we have in the cloud. So last important point is that cloud storage is provided as multi-tenancy and are metered. Multi-tenancy means uh, that the service will be leased by multiple users like you and uh, the same infrastructure will be provided to thousands of users to store their data. So, but of course, the infrastructure makes sure that one tenant's data is not exposed to another tenant's. So, how cloud storage work? Uh, cloud storage works as a virtual data center. It offers end users and applications virtual storage infrastructure uh, that can be scaled to the applica uh, application's requirements. It generally operates via a web-based API implemented remotely through its interaction with in-house cloud storage infrastructure. Uh, the cloud providers uh, provides graphical interface for the users to manually interact with the storage service uh, for administration and access of data files. Uh, cloud storage includes at least one data server to which a user can connect via the internet. The user sends files to the data server, which forwards the message to multiple servers manually or in an automated manner over the internet. Uh, the stored data can be can then be accessed via a web-based interface or a programmatically through APIs. Uh, cloud storage usually support an array of protocols and API standards so that the users can pick the best protocols or APIs for their need. To ensure the constant availability of data, cloud storage systems involve a large number of data servers. So therefore, if a server requires maintenance or fails, the user can be assured that the data has been moved elsewhere to ensure availability. Uh, the cloud storage providers usually keep at least two copies of every data in their cloud storage, and these copies are maintained in two physically separated data centers. So therefore, changes of a loss of your data files is very minimum. Further, the storage systems are designed so that any underlying hardware failures can be fixed without taking down the service. Nowadays, many cloud storage providers uh, provides the end users with the software that can be installed in your personal computer that acts as a local copy of the cloud storage. For an example, Microsoft Office 365 OneDrive and Google Drive both has software that can be installed in your machine and it will create a special folder in your local computer. So any file you copy or move to this folder will automatically be copied and merged to the file maintained in the cloud storage and when the copy in the cloud was, uh, uh, was changed by a different user or a program, the copy will be synced back to your computer's local copy seamlessly. Such software enables cloud storage to be available to users uh, without them uh, having to connect to the internet all the time. So in order for the cloud storage to work as explained just now, there needs to be hardware and software components in place. 
the hardware component needed are typically uh, typical to any cloud infrastructure. You need servers, storage devices, uh, you need networking equipment to have internet connectivity, and you need the other data center infrastructure in place, such as power provisioning systems, cooling systems, physical access control systems, and monitoring systems, and etc. On the uh, other side, of, on the, I mean, the, by looking at the software components, there need to be object-based infrastructure that allows data to be saved as objects. So these include the infrastructure as a service or a software as a service, a SaaS, uh, as well as uh, different cloud models, namely public, private, or have hybrid clouds. So then we need, we can, we need to, uh, we can, uh, we actually need virtualization software in place and also support different data transfer protocols and APIs uh, to let users to connect with data using their desired connection options. Some may manually connect to data files while some may build software to connect to data files. So we also need software services uh, to manage data replication and redundancy. Uh, while cloud storage provides many advantages, there are some noteworthy disadvantages as well. Here I have listed both. First, uh, advantages. Uh, cloud storage uh, storage provides access to data from anywhere in the world. It also provides access to anyone. But you must put in proper access uh, restrictions and security to make sure that access is given only to intended people. We will discuss this in a little while. Uh, data on a cloud storage can be accessed by any device. Further, the storage space can be increased or decreased at any time. Uh, also, the data is replicated and backed up by the provider automatically, and therefore we are uh, we don't need to worry about those aspects. Uh, cloud storage does not have downtimes because the data is on virtualized layer, and therefore even during maintenance and hardware failures, the data will be available for us. Uh, the cloud provider provides us with the advanced security on top of the cloud storage device. We can use those services as we want. Some of these securities included uh, in the standard charge, but some may come at an additional cost. So moving on to disadvantages. Uh, firstly, users with bad internet access may have challenging accessing files. The files are like continuously updated back and forth between your device and cloud storage when you are editing the file. So during bank internet, uh, I mean, when there's a bad internet or high latency, this sync may not work on time and the software you are using to edit or read the files will throw errors. So therefore you need stable and good quality internet access. Uh, cloud storage services are offered at the charge and therefore you must pay them monthly or annually uh, for your usage. For some, uh, this may be extremely costly than maintaining your own storage solution on premise. Uh, the next challenge or the disadvantage is that uh, since data is always accessed over the internet, it is highly prone to interception. Uh, next issue is that if security is not set properly on files or your cloud storage, tenancy, uh, unwanted parties such as Hackers can gain access to your sensitive data and harm the data as well by corrupting or deleting. And then we have uh, limited control on the exact physical location the data will be stored. This is a concern where the data you are saving is protected by data protection regulations such as GDPR or HIPAA or financial data regulations. Uh, cloud storage providers uh, has uh, yeah, the cloud storage providers has some hacks uh, to avoid these disadvantages or the limitations, but they come with a cost. That's right. So let's move on to discussing about storing and securing data in the cloud. How to keep data safe? You need to include security mechanisms to secure your data and passwords. So securing data files prevent hackers from gaining access to your data. Uh, securing stored passwords prevent passwords being exposed. Uh, file encryption or file-based encryption is the process of 
protecting individual files on a system using encryption algorithms. It it uh, it scrambles data into an un uh, intelligible form that a user can decode or decrypt with the help of cryptographic uh, graphic keys. The primary goal of file encryption is to ensure that files are protected against malicious hackers. It's beneficial when people need to transfer files over the internet or store them uh, securely on a uh, removable driver such as USB flash drive. So many people use built-in file encryption systems offered by Microsoft Windows or Apple Mac OS. So in enterprises, encryption software becomes a preferred choice to ensure more robust data protection. Uh, let's go through some encryption algorithms. Data encryption standard uh, or as DES is a now sort of outdated uh, symmetric encryption algorithms. You use the same key to encrypt and decrypt a message. Uh, this uses a 56-bit encryption key and encrypts data in blocks of 64 bits. So these sizes are typically not large enough for today's users. Therefore, other encryption algorithms have succeeded. DES. Uh, triple DES was once the standard symmetric algorithm. Triple DES employs three individual keys with 56 bits each. So 56 into 3, the total key length adds up to 168 bits. But according to most experts, its effective key strength is only 112 bits. And then we have RSA, a popular public key encryption algorithm. It uses a pair of uh, knowledge, sorry, pair of keys. The public key used to encrypt the message and the private key used to uh, decrypt. In encryption schemes, uh, there are two techniques you can employ to ensure data security, uh, symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption. The primary difference between these two types of encryption is that with symmetric encryption, the message to be protected can be encrypted and decrypted using the same key. Asymmetric encryption, on the other hand, requires the use of two separate keys, a public key and a private key. So in this case, data can be encoded by the public key, whereas data can be decoded by the private key. So in a simple word, uh, as you can guess, asymmetric encryption is more secure than symmetric encryption. Here's the process of symmetric encryption and decryption. Symmetric encryption is a data encryption model that works with just one key for encrypting or encoding and decrypting or decoding uh, private data. It's popular encryption option. Uh, and the secret key used here can either be a mix of letters words or numbers uh, for it to work both the recipient and the sender must know the private key to use for encoding and decoding data so it works by encrypting plain text then converting it to ciphertext with the help of an encryption algorithm and private keys the ciphertext can then be converted again to plain text with the help of the private key that was used to encrypt it with the decryption algorithms uh, symmetric uh, cryptography is widely used to secure data stored in hard drives, archives, computers, flash drives, and laptops. So these are data that are not involved in the active movement from network to network or device to device. So to protect such data, you can encrypt all the confidential files before storing them or encrypt the entire storage device. Let's see the symmetric encryption. It's an encryption model that requires two keys. For an example, key A and key B. It works in such a way that the information that key A can encrypt while key B can decrypt. Usually, these keys can be used interchangeably such that if you use key A to encrypt data, you can use key B to decrypt this information. And if you use key B to encrypt information, you can decrypt the same information using A. So this is, however, not fundamental in asymmetric encryption. Now, if you wish to use asymmetric encryption, you will, be, you will have to create a pair of matching keys. After that, you will make the encryption key public and then the decryption key private, hence the name public key cryptography and uh, private key cryptography. 
you can then sign private messages by encrypting them using the public keys uh, this is important because it ensures that only the intended recipient uh, with the matching private keys of the messages can see them and not a uh, not an interceptor asymmetric encryption is used when data is in transit to be stored in a remote storage like cloud storage or a database in a data center as well as when retrieving data from data storage to application uh, encrypting the data prevents any hacker from intercepting the data and understanding what's in there while the data travels through the internet Uh, encryption can take place or rather implement at different levels such as in the application level on the generated data or input data can be encrypted in database level we can store data after encrypting such as credit card numbers social security numbers and etc we also can encrypt at folder level file level and also on disk level as well Uh, securing stored passwords is an area we seldom think about, but it's extremely important to learn the importance and risk. All passwords are stored in some database or a hard disk for reference whenever needed. So they, saving these passwords in plain text is extremely risky because if someone gets access to the server or the device it is stored, your passwords and uh, systems are compromised. Therefore, we need to secure the passwords that are stored to but how and where a password is stored depends on the program or software or the device that is using and managing the password so hashing is the best option for password protection hashing is scrambling plain text to uh, unrecognizable test text why uh, it is better than uh, encryption well, the reason is hashing function is a one-way operation. Once hashed, no one can ever decrypt the hash uh, to find the original password. Further, since encryption is a two-way function, attackers can find ways to retrieve uh, the original plain text from the encrypted text. So you must be wondering that if a hashed password can never be decrypted, how an application authenticates a password when the user tries to log in? So when we try to log in, what the application does is it hashes the password we just entered and try to compare the hash of the password we entered against the hash of the correct password it has stored. So if the two are matching, then it's a go. Now let's look at options of securing the password based on their usage. Uh, there are two basic usage for passwords one usage is for login or authentication and the other usage is to secure the data or files or uh, compressed files so the purpose of using a login password is to verify the identity identity of a user trying to uh, access a system application or a service while the purpose of a password used to Protect a file is to encrypt the content, ensure only individuals with the correct password can access encrypted data. Uh, the security focus uh, login password is to verify user's identity and ensure only authorized users can gain access while security focus of passwords on files is protecting the confidentiality of the data. So even if an unauthorized person gains access to the encrypted files, they won't be able to read the content without the password. Uh, the login passwords are not typically stored in plain text. Instead, they are usually hashed using uh, strong hashing algorithms. Uh, best practice for login password is to store them as hashed in a database or in a password management system. So it enhances the security by ensuring that even if the password database is compromised, Attackers cannot easily obtain the actual password. So for passwords used in on encrypting files, the password itself is needed to decrypt the data. So it needs to be stored somewhere and be available when anyone enters the password to decrypt the file. Uh, the challenge is to store it securely to prevent un unauthorized access. 
Uh, sometimes password can be stored alongside the encrypted data, but this requires strong access controls on the storage location or strong encryption used in the file encryption software. So the best practice is to use a strong encryption algorithm to encrypt files or data and ensure that the password used for encryption is uh, strong uh, and also kept uh, confidential. Before we conclude this lesson, this is how the future of data storage would look like. Please note, this is out of your syllabus, so just read for your personal knowledge only. The best way to predict the future is to look at the trends in research and development and uh, usage related to those areas. And here we list the emerging trends that will have an impact in future of data storage. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you understand how to and the importance of securing data files with encryption and passwords with hashing. So let's meet, uh, let's meet next with a new lesson. And until then, good luck with your studies.